realized this morning that I didn't really stop and take the time to walk you guys through the, the process of making apple cider, the step-by-step -step and how it works, the yields and such. So uh, since the last video, we've had uh, two presses where we've had uh, some friends over and we've probably ran about 30 gallons, 35 gallons through the apple cider press and it really has worked well. It's actually exceeded my expectations. All of the apples that we've got um, have uh, been organic, uh, brought by some friends, but the majority of them, uh, Jack and my sister, just went around to the local areas and just picked. This area is famous for apples. There's a lot of people that have moved into orchards and the apples are, are just being wasted. They're just falling on the ground. It's a shame. So uh, we've contacted a lot of those people or we drive by and see them and, and everyone's been really kind. And we back the truck up there and just pick as many as we can. So that's what we have right here is, um, is the remnants of that. So let's go over how it works and just to kind of do a step-by-step -step process and I'll, uh, well, let's get to it. Right here in this bucket is, uh, that's what an organic apple looks like. I think most of Americans uh, have never seen an organic apple. Most Americans uh, would detest an apple that had uh, any type of a wormhole or an imperfection and only uh, will buy or, lo or look at the, that type of apple in the grocery stores. You know, those apples are, uh, come with a cost and the cost is uh, to produce apples that look like that, um, you have to spray them with a lot of chemicals. And where do you think those chemicals ultimately end up? This is what an organic apple looks like. It's maybe not the right size, maybe it has a blemish or a flaw. But the taste, uh, the texture, the crispness uh, are just unparalleled. I never knew what good apples were like growing up. We had one type of apple in the house. I think it was the only type that was available. The horrible red delicious, those bright blood red apples, the mealy, no taste, bitter skins, uh, just awful apples. These apples uh, are just incredible. Uh, the galas, the, I don't know, I'll even know all the names. Uh, they're, the texture is so good. I, I liken it to, it's like eating perfume, perfume that tastes good. Uh, just such a treasure. So if you can get your hands on proper Northwest organic apples uh, and you've never had them before, they are outstanding. So with that said, uh, the, pros, the, the best combination of apples for apple cider is two sweet and one sour. Uh, it gives you a little bit of tartness. Typically your, your green apples, are going to be, not always, but uh, a little more on the tart side than the reds will be a little bit sweeter uh, and kind of mix that up. So it's not scientific, it doesn't, not that big of a deal, it's just kind of a rule of thumb. So right here we have about a, a little over a bush of, bushel of apples. If you've heard the word bushel used, that's uh, I believe 42 to 48 pounds of apples and that's just about what we have right here. So we'll um, start pouring those in and uh, see what we can come out with. So this press that I built is a two barrel press. As you can see, it's got one and two. The reason behind that is you can have one person turning the crank and the mash will fall into the first barrel and then another person operating the screw pressing the cider itself. Just speeds things up and just makes it a nice compact unit. I have seen them uh, stand alone where you have a single press uh, and then you uh, have maybe a standalone grinder. However, uh, a lot of them don't have the grinder and people come up with all different ways to mash up the, the apples. I've seen them put them in five gallon buckets and pound them with a sledgehammer. This to me seems to be the best way and, and um, definitely the most efficient. And it has been really worked well. So how it works is uh, you turn the crank and on the other side is a real heavy flywheel. And what, that, what I've noticed, especially with smaller kids, is they're running it, they don't have the strength to get it going, but once you can get it going for them, that flywheel keeps everything in motion and even, even littler kids uh, can operate this. The trick is, is not to put too many apples in the hopper. I noticed that, uh, or we found that uh, you put about two or three at, in at a time, just keep kind of throwing them in and they'll grind really efficiently and go right through in, in, in a nice mash. If you fill up the whole hopper, uh, the problem we ran into is you had to take a stick and kind of poke it down in there and it took a pretty strong arm uh, to rotate the mechanism. So uh, there's no hurry and the slower motion gives you a better pulp or, or adding fewer apples gives you a better pulp and an overall better experience for everybody. So let's um, fire it up and I'll show you uh, uh, how it kind of grinds it up and then we'll uh, press this bushel and see what we end up with. 
You see the pallet that the Apple Press is sitting on is property of Coca-Cola. It's hard to ignore the irony. All right, as you can see there, the uh, pulverizer gets us up to speed. I'll show you, I can easily run this by myself. that the cider is already coming out even before the press just from uh, what's coming out of the of the mash right there so that whole bushel that I showed you earlier I used up all of the apples and it just about filled up that whole thing so that's just about perfect right there so what you do is you grab this pallet here and you slide your mash under your screw. So now I'll take the press plate here and set that on top of the barrel. Then I'll run the screw down into the socket. So there's a little set screw here on the socket. And what I've learned that that's for is you open it up and then you uh, press and, this, and the screw will rotate inside the socket. And then when you're done, uh, you uh, close this set screw and then turn the screw up. What that does was, is that will lift that whole uh, press plate out of there. I found the press plate was really tight. It fits really good when it's dry, but when you get a bunch of uh, apple mash in there, it makes it tight. So th that really helps that you have a heavy barrel full of mash. You can just screw and lift it right, right up and uh, it works really good. So now that we've, we've got everything set here, we'll go ahead and start with our press. Ideally, I think you'd put a cheesecloth or some type of a fabric uh, in your barrel first so it would strain the juice. Uh, I don't have one, so we haven't used that. I've just strained it uh, once I get out with some paint strainers. I'll show you how I do that too. So uh, I've got the camera set up here, and now I'll start pressing. And you can watch the volume increase.
That's about as tight as I can get the screw pretty much pressed out and it's just finishing up there. But you can see we got a pretty good amount. I bet there's a, a good couple gallons at least there. So now we'll take the press plate out. What we've got left is some really, really nice composting material for the garden. So you, here you can see the remains of the pressed out barrel. It's really firm. It's pressed it down to probably um, it's 40% of what it originally was into basically a real hard cake. That's what's so nice about these pallets here is, is you can grab it and move it around because the bottoms of the barrels are open. So what I'll do now is put this in container and then we'll take it over and put it in our compost bin. So here you can kind of see the scale of what the yield was. We had this uh, black tub pretty much heaped up with apples. I figured probably about 50 pounds or so, a good heavy bushel. And this is what we ended up here with probably a couple gallons out of that. Uh, but we know what we have. We've got organic apple cider here that is just something you just cannot buy uh, that is uh, just amazing. If you're looking for a really great project uh, for basic woodworking or want to get into woodworking, I'd really recommend this table. I want to share it with you that I built. Uh, the, the plans for this table uh, I found in Popular Mechanics and it was on the web and they're still available. And what's unique about it is it's uh, built using just standard framing material like you can find at Home Depot. Nothing uh, special. You've got some little, um, some little one by twos there. You can see that they're like butcher block. They're all individual pieces and then the threaded rod goes all the way through so you can tighten them down which makes it kind of unique. Uh, the legs and such are just made out of two by fours and two by sixes. And if you look close in there, it's got inserted round dowels uh, for stretchers. So at each joint, you can see that right there where the screws go in. Screws don't hold very, or t lumber doesn't hold very well uh, with screwing into the butt end. So a proper way to do it is, as you can see, the round one inch oak dowels. You recess those in there and then run the screws into those. They're called stretchers. But uh, just a great little handy little table. Uh, it looks very nice if you hand pick some uh, nice material, uh, something you could put inside. But everyone who sees it always comments on it, and I just wanted to share that with you. If you and if you are looking for a, a simple project, this is um, something that's really cool, and you can find it uh, in Popular Mechanics. So and, and it's a great. It really complements the apple press well. It's nice to have that. The, the little table to, to step, put the barrels and the apples on and and very very useful so I, I look at these two things as kind of a um, a pair now so we'll see you have the next video happy with it so I'll, uh, let me bring the camera in I'll give you a little bit closer view Here you can see the top of it where the this cast arch 